Okay guys, well we're getting into the bowels of it now. So, this is the two channel amp module uh, taken out of the chassis. Um, because originally, as I think I told you last time, I was focused down around here looking at these uh, preamps and amps. Um, couldn't really find anything seriously amiss on this side here. Um, so started scoping it up, I couldn't find any signals anywhere. Just static DC volts. So following the circuit all the way back, can't find anything coming in either. So the channel input is right here. And it goes in through uh, the selector. Then there's this attenuator box, which is completely sealed up. Uh, full of capacitors and resistors and things. All of which can be adjusted uh, when you calibrate the scope, which I may get to at some point. Um, so nothing coming out of this thing at all, but I can see so it's out there. You just gotta gotta take it all out and get a look in here and see uh, uh, what you can find. Uh, the first piece of good news is the shield that's on this side of the module um, actually unclips. So you can actually get at this side of the circuit board as well as the other side. And here, if I can get it to focus, is where those two uh, burned resistors are that are still fitted. You can, I think you can see those guys uh, right there. That one and that one. Nicely uh, stained. Uh, the good news is I can actually get around the back now, so I can change them without having to pigtail or anything when the time comes. However, I started to general look around now that I had this thing out. Uh, so the first thing I saw was a mechanical connection thing. Um, so there's a, um, a plastic collar around this particular pot shaft and it has this metal uh, plate on it. And when you rotate all the way around until the point where it stops, um, there are then two spring-loaded contacts right here, which make. Problem number one, I find, is one of the wires is not soldered on. It's, sorry, one of the wires is just busted off. So that contact is not being made. Um, unfortunately, uh, what somebody did in the past Rather than simply do a proper cleaning job on these spring-loaded contacts in here, let me get a bit more light in here. Instead of just cleaning these spring-loaded contacts, they soldered uh, part of the surface here to raise it up to get better contact, theoretically. Um, but there's pretty strong pressure on these guys. Um, and of course, uh, that really didn't help too much. It might have helped in the short term, but of course the solder tarnishes um, and so basically when you when this thing goes under these two contacts Yeah, it's just a constantly varying resistance um, It's not really doing its job properly. It's the same uh, It's actually worse on the other side So on the other side the guy has put tons of solder uh, all along here from both of them. Um, now at least here um, both of the wires are connected. However this wire, this pink wire here, when I follow this to its destination which again is it's not connected and there's burn mark signs here so it looks like this bulb shorted out at some point and caused a problem so I need to fix that, fix all these contacts um, and then I'll show you what else I found so here's the underside of the board for uh, channel which channel is this? anyway not that it really matters the other channel so you can see here the uh, stains burns on the circuit board and so these are the two resistors that will have to get changed. Um, on close inspection you probably can't see it here, but here the circuit 
trace is lifted. So somebody has been in here soldering away in the past. This wire here also has got burn damage along the wire, either from a sol probably from a soldering iron really. So probably somebody came in from the top rather than um, take this panel off, I don't know. Um, the next thing I found is there is a resistor, a transistor here. Um, and there really is insufficient solder. Um, so again, it looks like, although it's clean, this transistor may have been replaced. Um, so yes, generally signs, and uh, this solder joint here, this burnt wire looks pretty awful. So I'm definitely not the first person in here. There's little blobs of solder on the circuit board and everything. So, um, before I start doing any more methodical stuff, I'm going to get all this mechanical contact stuff cleaned up. See if I can get a new bulb to go on the, uh, on the front, like this one. Um, and make sure all these contacts work, make sure all the wires are connected up. I'll clean all this up. Um, replace the two uh, burned resistors uh, and start again and then see where we go see if I can fix these uh, lifted up circuit traces here because that's nasty nasty there you go guys what fun Norm this is where you'd say to the customer actually you may as well jump in and go get yourself a new one but we're not gonna do that we're gonna fix this <laughs> Uh, this is a little indicator bulb uh, that that pink wire was going to um, that had sort of a burn uh, signs on the end of the wires uh, where one had come off it was right at the edge of the bulb um, which is like a sealed like glued up affair so I cut the glue back enough to actually get enough of the other lead to poke out so I could tin it more bad luck is the one on the other side. I noticed the wire is off that one as well. It's just hanging right beside it, but it's disconnected. Um, and so it'll be exactly the same as this uh, with one lead snapped off. So we're going to have to find out what these are and see if I can find something that we can use instead of these guys. So after doing a little bit more research on these indicators that I, um, as I said, two of, out of the three of which are blown, um, I've discovered that they're uh, neons powered by 120 volts. I assume it's 120 volts DC, um, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look exactly. Um, but fortunately, um, the uh, how can I put it? The um, they're completely in parallel with their function if you know what I mean in other words when I when you do like a pull to invert on this side um, the actual inversion happens down here on the circuit board but there is a completely parallel switch up here on this control um, just to provide power to the little indicator that says you've pulled the uh, switch to invert so since these neons are totally isolated, from, if you like, from the functions that are actually being performed, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace all these guys with LEDs, and instead of feeding everything with 120 volts, I'll take a, a low voltage feed off the circuit board here somewhere, uh, and drive them all with 5 volts, 12 volts, or something like that, and change a couple of resistors. Um, it's also going to make life a lot easier on these uh, spring-loaded contacts here. Um, and so that's the plan right now. I'm not going to attempt to put replicate original neons in here uh, and have that 120 volts going everywhere because it's really not necessary.